All right, welcome to part six. You're halfway done with this 12 part series. Okay, so let's get started. A shirt is 30% off on sale. If the regular price is $40, what is the sale price of the shirt? Okay, so one of the things I like to do um, is actually, instead of taking the shirt price and multiplying it by the percent off and then subtracting it from the original price again, what I do is I do 100 minus 30, which is 70%, because that's how much you're actually gonna pay. So then I take 40 times 0.7, and that's the actual price you're gonna pay for the shirt. So 40 times 0.7, 28. Okay, so that's just shaving off one step and saving you some time. All right, what is the decimal form of the following? So I'm gonna treat this one as if you can't have a calculator on this section. So we're gonna have 36 plus, and we'll put the decimal there, okay? And we're gonna move this decimal one place to the left because there's one zero, so 0 0.5. This one has three zeros, so we're gonna move it one, two, three. Fill in the zeros, one, two, and two. And then we just add straight down two, zero, five, six, three. If K is 12 more than three quarters of 16, what is the value of K? So if K is 12 more, so plus 12 or 12 plus, three fourths of 16, all right? So, and according to our order of operations, we need to do the multiplication first. So this 16 is over one. So reduce that, so one and four. So K equals 12 plus three times four, 12. So that equals 24. Driving at a constant rate, it takes Jen 12 minutes to get to the supermarket. So supermarket equals 12 and half that time to get to the gas station. So gas station, half of 12 is six. It takes her three times as long as the gas station to get to work. Okay, so work is three times gas, so three times G, which is three times six, which is 18. So how long does it take to get to work? 18 minutes. What is the value of A if 3 fourths divided by A equals 9? The first thing we're going to do is multiply both sides by A. Okay, that cancels here. We get 3 fourths equals 9A. And then we're going to divide by 9. But since we have a fraction over here, we're actually going to... Sorry. We're actually going to multiply by one ninth. Okay, so that way that cancels. And then one times three, three, nine times, oh. hold on. We can actually cross cancel here. So three goes into nine three times. So one times one, one, three times four, 12. And that equals A. If M percent of N is 16, what is N percent of M? Okay, so we know the answer is gonna be 16, but let me show you why. Because M, 0.01% times N is equal to 16. So what is 0.01N times M? Okay, well, if we drop the multiplication signs and reorder in alphabetical order, and we can do that because of the transitive property of multiplication, we'll notice that we have exactly the same thing. Okay, so that is equal to 16 also. Okay, a chemical recipe calls for five parts water to two parts chemical. So five water, two chemical. If the amount of water is tripled, so five times three, 15 water, 
and the chemical is doubled times two, so four chemical. What percentage of the new mixture is the chemical? So first we need the formula, which is going to be our part over our whole. Okay, so what part is the chemical? So we know that the chemical is four and over the whole, which means the total of the mixture, which is gonna be 19. So four over 19, divide that out. 0.2105. Move the decimal over two times, so we have 21.05%. Okay, if set A consists of fractions with a numerator of 1 and a denominator of D such that D is between 7 and 12, where D is an integer. Okay, so that's very important. So our first set A consists of one over, and it starts at seven, but if you notice, it doesn't say less than or equal to. So really, we can't use seven. So it's one over eight, one over nine, one over 10, one over 11, and can we use 12? No, because it doesn't have an equal to. So that is set A. Set B consists of the reciprocals of the fractions with even denominators in set A. So set B is only the even ones, so 8 and 10. Okay. What is the product of all the numbers that are elements in either set A or set B? So product, which means we're going to multiply all these together. Now, what I know is that when I multiply a reciprocal together, it'll automatically cancel out. So the 1 8th times 8 is going to cancel. The 1 10th times 10 is going to cancel. So now all we're left with is 1 over 9 times 1 over 11, which gives us 1 over 99. All right, for which values is f of x not defined? And remember, for not defined means the denominator is equal to 0. Okay, so we're going to set this whole denominator equal to zero and solve for x. So first we get absolute value 2x plus 4 minus 10 equals zero. Add the 10 over. Okay, at this point, the absolute value is by itself. Now, if you had something out in front, like let's say we had a five out in front, you would have to divide both sides by five first. But since we don't have anything in front of this absolute value, we can go on to the next step. So at this point, we're going to separate it into two different equations. Now the interior of the absolute value always stays the same. Okay, and the first is gonna be exactly what it is. And then 2x plus 4 also equals negative 10. Because remember, if you put a negative 10 inside absolute value, it'll still come out positive. So now we just solve for x. So subtract 4, that equals 6. Divide by 2, so that equals 3. Again, subtract 4, negative 14. Divide by 2, negative 7. Okay? Now, if this had ended up being a negative number on the equal side, that cannot happen. So your absolute value must always equal a positive number, okay? If it's a negative number over here, it's not possible. All right. Hey guys, so I know you can tell this is a different day. As I was editing this video, I really did not like how I explained this one. I got really flustered because I didn't put my answers on there. It was a thing. So I'm going to re-record this and hopefully I like it better. We'll see. All right. So X, Y, and Z are distinct positive integers. So distinct meaning they don't repeat. Obviously positive integers, no fractions. All right. So 25% of X, Y, Z is 3. So 0.25 times x times y times z equals 3. 
equals three. So which of the following could be a value of y plus z? Okay, so first what we're gonna do is uh, divide everything by 0.25. which will give us 12. Okay, so now what three numbers, distinct positive numbers, can we multiply together to get 12? So first let's look at all the different possibilities of finding 12. So we have one times 12, two times six, whoops, six, and three times four. Okay, now how do we get four? Well, we can do three times one times four and three times two times two, which since they need to be distinct integers, we can't actually use this three times two times two. So that goes away. All right, now what are the different ways we can get six? Well, we've got two times one times six, two times two times three, but again, we can't use that one. All right, so now what are the ways of getting 12? Well, we have one times one times 12, which that can't work. We have one times two times six, which we already have. We have one times three times four, which we already have as well. Okay, so those are all of our distinct possibilities of three different integers multiplying to get 12. All right, so what is a possibility of getting y plus z? Now, it didn't tell us that these are in any specific order. So let's just start here. Well, 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 plus 6 is 8. 1 plus 6 is 7. 3 plus 1 is 4. 1 plus 4 is 5 and four plus three is seven, which we already have. All right, so now let's look at all of these possibilities and see which one lines up here. Do we have a two? No. Do we have a six? No. Do we have an eight? Yes. And do we have a nine? No. So automatically our answer is C. Well, that went a lot better, yay.